I bought this boat sight unseen from a seller on Craigslist in Savannah, Georgia in 2015. Then I had it towed 3,000 miles to my home in western Washington. The price was right, and it was a major upgrade over what I could afford in Washington. Stay tuned for another video about shipping boats, as I have shipped two now. And it's a pretty interesting process. The boat was usable when I got it, and I had a ton of fun with it that first summer. I slowly upgraded and improved it over the last four years. Almost everything has been replaced. Both motors, all gauges, all electronics, all pumps, stereo speakers, you name it. Before I sell it, let's do a walkthrough video. The boat didn't come with any graphics, so I made my own. The swim step came totally rotted. I replaced it with a piece of starboard. Myself, that was an easy mod. Um, got the name of the boat. Again, just made those myself. Big changes. I got all new electronics. It's a new transducer. Um, trim tabs didn't work. Had to put oil in the pump, the hydraulic pump. That was an easy fix. Totally replaced the Mercury 150 two stroke with the Yamaha 150 four stroke. I got used from Canada. I love it. It's been a huge mod. Um, this year, recently, I guess last summer, this summer I got a, a, a new kicker motor. Um, that's kind of a nice to have, not a need to have. It's got a hydraulic trim, which is so nice for salmon fishing. Um, and it's also electric start, so that's super nice. And uh, it's got a super long shaft, so I don't even have to, um, I don't even have to lower down the bracket if I don't want to. I could just, I could keep it low and then tilt up. It's a high thrust kicker. Out here I'm in the Pacific Northwest, we, we troll for salmon, so a kicker motor is pretty much a must. When I got the boat, the previous owner had done some some mods I didn't really didn't really like so he had the um, the water the fuel water separator right here and while that was really easy to get to it kind of blocked access to the bilge so I moved it back to its original location and then added a, a sight bowl on the bottom that I can drain so if any water gets in there it sinks to the bottom and I can there's a little drain in the bottom um, I can turn that little nipple and drain off water and it almost never happens I check it every year there's never been a um, you know an appreciable amount of water in there but uh, it's nice to have um, of course the washdown pump was shot when I bought the boat replaced that uh, bilge pump had been melted I think there had been some kind of fuel spill in here and the bracket was a little melted I replaced that with a 750 gallon auto switch and then wired it in correctly. It wasn't wired correctly before. So as far as stereo goes, I got the the JVC Bluetooth. And then I replaced the six by nines that came with it. They were like West Marine and they, uh, they were all yellow and didn't sound that great anyway. Uh, I didn't want to cut too many more holes, but I, I definitely wanted a stereo I could actually hear when I'm running at speed. So I added these um tower speakers but i had to make my own because every every speaker i saw that was made for kind of top mounted was like a wakeboard style and it fired backwards um and then plus my i had some friends that bought cheap versions of that and they just rust in the salt so i'm just putting them at pretty much exclusive saltwater boater so what i did was these this is six inch pvc pipe and then I put a cap on it this is a PVC cap, like this normal standard stuff, drilled a hole and it's six and a half inch marine speakers fit perfectly. So, um, and then that was the easy part actually wiring, wiring uh, wire inside this tube was definitely the tricky part. Um, and then it's attached with big stainless steel fender washers up here. So, yeah, 
So no problems there, it's sealed up. I didn't want to drill more holes, but I wanted speakers that fired backwards. So this, this these spots here were actually these six inch pie, pie plates like for access. And so I still have the original version. I just cut starboard rings and I put them here. And these, these speakers have been replaced twice so far and they take a beating because all the water that lands up there just rolls back down over these speakers. So salt water, fresh water, it, uh, they take a hammering. So these are, you know, $25 boss speakers. And I don't think I'm ever gonna spend too much on those because they don't last in that environment. And then more stereo stuff in here. So I got six speakers. Then I also have this 12 inch sub that I had to drill a hole for, um, but I didn't, it doesn't use any space. So, it, you know, it, was, it mounts out of the way um, in the cuddy. And then that is powered by this, this sub or this amp I got in high school. And then as this, I got this four channel off Craigslist. So this runs the four cockpit speakers the, that you saw. And then the deck runs the cheap two six and a halfs. And then this, this one is bridged for this, this um, sub. And it's, it's, um, it's, uh, you know, I'd say it's a cheap poor man's stereo, but um, that's kind of how I, I need to do it because in a saltwater environment, stereos don't last very long. And then I, the one kind of custom thing I kind of like, I, I, I made it so I can reach in from the driver's seat and turn off the sub. So this is just a, this is just a, uh, I think they call it a bass knob or it's a level controller from PAC and it just controls this amp. So basically I can turn this amp all the way down. And I do that because I got the kids in here sleeping. I don't want to run this, this subwoofer in here, so. It's, it's a great setup, it's, it's pretty cheap and I love it. Then as far as other electronic mods, I replaced I replaced the VHF radio with the DSC model that uh, can actually take coordinates from this Garmin with the old NEMA standard. I think it's, it's before NEMA 2000. get this turned on here sorry so this the DSC radio can take these GPS coordinates and uh, if you can see it's it's flashing the coordinates right there and so they talk to each other and so I can uh, push this distress button and it will send a uh, location to um, nearby vessels including the Coast Guard so thought that was a pretty cool upgrade it doesn't have the AIS but it uh, DSC is pretty cool This box is great for storage, but uh, I added this, um, just a uh, USB port. I can s put cell phones in here dry, charge them up, and then I got a voltmeter. I, I turn it on and off the switch. Used to have a remote spotlight on top. Don't, don't really use that. Didn't work that well. Then the other upgrade, I got new seats. Kids, walk around boats are great for kids. <laughs> you, guys, you guys love the boat? Yeah. So I upgraded the seats to these Atwood seats, which I do like. They're probably a bit more comfortable. I wish they had shro like um, shoulder rests or like handles for your like elbows. And I also wish that they were stiff so people come back here and try to hold on and they'll shove my seat forward. So that's the only thing I don't like, but otherwise they're pretty red. What? The other upgrade I made was these, uh, this kind of a DIY suspension seat. Um, it's got an onboard 12 volt pump. See it's going up, 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 up. And so it's an air ride setup and it's got a shock in there and so the more air you put in it the more it's like an airbag the more the stiffer it is so can you, can you jump up and down you, she probably can't do it go up and down <laughs> but uh 
Anyway, it's pretty it's pretty good for my back. And then I have a stainless a stainless swivel in there. Um, it was a bug. Some other mods to the boat. I got the downrigger mounts now, and then they're electric. So I got the Scotty electric plugs here, both sides, so I can run my shrimp pot puller or and my downrigger right here. It's all flush. Got more Scotty rod holders, which is nice. So that is the plug for the Scotty downrigger. This is what it looks like. This is how we fish in the Pacific Northwest for salmon. We troll. And this lets you get down deep with the, put this 15 pound ball on the end. Right there, and that clip right there. And then um, this thing can go, release it, release it with this lever. I'm sorry to do this one handed. Pull it out, you can, uh, it can extend out pretty far if you want. That allows you to attach a 15 pound ball and get down to any depth you want. Usually, as deep as I go is usually 200, but generally 80. This is attached to the ball and this clips to your fishing line. So that will pull it down. And then when the fish bites, it'll pull it right out of there and then you just fight the fish and don't have to have this 15 pound ball on your on your line and then the best part of course about the electric is you can go auto up and it will just go come up and uh you know that's really nice to have electric when you're pulling up 15 pound balls all the time they also, these are called flashers that uh, that's, attracts the salmon, they spin around. Anyway, I won't go into salmon fishing too much. Gotta have about 100 of these different types. So there you go, guys. There's a super in-depth walkthrough video. If you have any questions, post them down below. I really did enjoy this ProLine boat. I had a couple issues, but what boat doesn't? Mainly due to the previous owners. And I'll try to include some links to some products I used. So that's it. See you guys on the water.